Hey there, my name is Mira, and this is Getting to Know Hexels 3, a series of tutorials designed to show you how you can create cool art using our geometric painting app, Hexels. In this first episode, I'll be giving a general overview on the user interface, what certain tools are capable of, and where they live. Let's get started. When you first open Hexels, you'll be met by the new file window. This tab shows a number of templates that use different shape modes and document settings. The Sample Files tab showcases a variety of art made in Hexels that you, the artist, can break down and learn from. I'll return to the Templates tab and choose Hexels Classic. In Hexels, your canvas is a grid composed of geometric shapes. Your canvas settings are found under the Document tab. You can toggle the grid view on and off by hitting the icon on the top right or simply hit Ctrl G. Tweak your grid's characteristics by dialing up the grid opacity and changing its color. You can also view your grid as a point grid and change the background color of your canvas. The number of hexels determines the size of your canvas. There is a vector mode for sharp, vector-based art, and pixel mode for previewing your work as rasterized pixels. We'll talk more about pixel mode in a later video. On the left-hand side, you'll find the toolbar. The very first tool is the brush tool, which allows you to paint with the shape of the grid. You can increase the brush size with the brush size slider, or use the square bracket keys. The Shape tab defines what shape your grid is set to. Trixel is our most powerful grid, allowing you to paint with a multitude of subgrids. You can flip through each grid by clicking the icons on the top left, or you can hold down the Alt key and hit numbers 1 through 9. You can paint an isometric cube with multiple ramps and faces, or you can paint more complex shapes and patterns, like this flower. I've blocked out the petals using the large hexagon subgrid, and following that, I used the shard subgrid to paint more intricate shapes for the inner section of the petal as well as the stem. The Outline tool lets you paint outline detail on the grid. You can adjust the thickness of the line with the line width slider, and the Outline tool contains subtools. Paint outlines for painting outlines step by step. Fill outlines fills in entire shapes with an outline. Erase outlines erases outlines by the step. And Flood Fill Erase removes entire outlines. The Palette tab is great for saving frequently used colors. You can export and import palette files and create gradients in between two colors by simply dragging one color swatch over the other with empty swatches in between. The Line tool allows you to block out major structures using lines of Trixel. You can use the Fill tool to fill in shapes. There are interchangeable subtools under the Fill tool that can be unrolled by holding down the icon. The Gradient tool allows you to create two styles of gradients, a linear gradient and a radial gradient. The Noise tool creates a scattered fill effect with multiple opacities, and the shape drawn is based on the selected subgrid. You'll note that the Noise and Gradient tools fill in a whole area on the canvas, constrained to the color I started on, similar to the Paint Bucket Fill tool. There are three interchangeable selection tools, Marquee Selection, Magic Wand Selection, and Paintbrush Selection. You can select an area of color paint inside of the bounds, and move the selection around the canvas. Under the Layers tab, you'll find options for creating and duplicating layers, masking layers, adjustment layers, and grouping. Create a new layer by hitting the plus icon, and duplicate it with a double plus icon. Pixel layers are new to Hexels 3. They allow you to paint with pixel brushes that have their own configurations. You can adjust a layer's opacity using the Layer Opacity slider. Double-click a layer 
to open up the Layer Properties window. You'll find various blending modes under Blending, and you're able to adjust a number of properties under General. Turn up the Glow Multiplier slider to strengthen the glow of an individual layer, and check Exported Grid to have a visible grid in your final exported image. When Halftone is checked, you can adjust the opacity of the layer to adjust the overall size of each hexel on the canvas. You can also draw multiple sized halftones by setting the pen pressure to opacity and painting with different pressures on your tablet. Back on the Layer Properties window, you have a wide variety of effects to choose from under the Effects panel, such as Blob, Hue is Saturation, and Chromatic Aberration. You can use adjustment layers to add global effects which apply to the layers below. Adjustment layers are useful for adding effects to the entire canvas, like Hue Saturation, Chromatic Aberration, or Sharpen. Organize your layers into groups by selecting a bunch of layers and hitting the group icon. Alternatively, right-click a layer and hit Create Group from Selection. Create a mask on a layer to freely remove and re-add painted detail using the black and white colors. Applying a clipping mask to a layer allows you to paint inside the contents of the layer below without having to carefully paint inside bounds. To start creating an animation, hit the Timeline tab. The Timeline acts as an extension of the Layers tab, and there are animation tracks for every layer and its properties. This block is called a cell. You can create simple animations by double-clicking cells in these tracks and painting something new in each frame. We'll go through a more in-depth exploration of animation in a later video. Use the Frame tool to isolate an area of your painting for export by simply dragging a box over a section, tweaking its dimensions, and hitting File Export. To export an animation, you'll want to choose Export Animation, and you can export as a sprite sheet, animated GIF, animated PNG, or a folder of images. That's it for the overview video! Be sure to stay tuned for future episodes to learn more about Hexels.